and welcome to Washington Execs video series. I'm your host, Amanda Zieta, and with me today is John Klum. He's a Principal Director and Chief of Government Relations at the Aerospace Corporation. Thanks so much for joining me today, John. Well, thanks very much, Amanda. I'm uh, happy to be here, uh, especially between COVID and uh, the snow day we're having today. I appreciate your uh, patience in getting this set up. Uh, just quick background on me, I was a submarine officer uh, when I started my professional career. I have a PhD in aerospace engineering and I've worked in the Senate, the Pentagon, and even the National Security Council staff on space-related issues. Uh, I was at RAND as a senior engineer before this opportunity at aerospace came up and been really impressed by aerospace's uh, breadth and scope of work they do for the United States government uh, across the space enterprise. They're dedicated to space enterprise. They're an FFRDC, federally funded research and development corporation. Uh, and I'm really pleased to be working with them. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for sharing that background with us. It's extremely relevant for our conversation today. Uh, so we're here to discuss the National Space Council, which was established many years ago, then disbanded, uh, and then reestablished in 2017 under the Trump administration. So I want to start by asking if you can briefly describe the conversation surrounding the Space Council today and where government and industry stand on that conversation. Yeah, that's a great question. So thanks. Um, so where we are right now in time for the United States is this question in the space community is, will there be a National Space Council uh, during the Biden administration or not? Uh, and part of the answer to that question is going to lie in what is the objective in, of the National Space Council? What is it? So the stated objective uh, from the National Space Council is to coordinate U.S. national space policy across all the relevant agencies and segments. So that includes uh, the defense industry, it includes the intelligence community, of course, also national security, uh, civil uh, part of space, NASA. NASA just landed Perseverance on, on Mars about 30 minutes ago. It was very exciting, right? But so a huge piece, space station, Mars probes, uh, Earth orbiting satellites that, that, that look at the Earth for science. Uh, and of course, there's also the, the commercial part of the equation, which is uh, really increasing at an accelerating rate right now. And so coordinating across all of those elements is not something that can be done in a stovepipe just focused on national security or just focused on civil or commercial uh, equities. And so that's what it's supposed to do. Um, the question of where the conversation is right now, industry has come out generally in favor of it. By industry, of course, I mean space industry. Uh, it makes sense. It gives them a seat at the table that they normally wouldn't be in. When I worked for the National Security Council for uh, decisions uh, related to, let's say, missile defense or things to do with Russia, there's, there's national security professionals in the U.S. government are in those rooms. Uh, and trying to get a, a whole of government and a whole of economy approach to space uh, requires uh, people who aren't in the government but support the government or support the economy. And so I think they're quite in favor. Uh, several associations have sent letters of support or joined on one letter of support. For the government uh, and the, the Biden administration, the jury's still out. Uh, they've been basically silent on it. Uh, there was, a, if you're a tea leaf reader, there was a national security memorandum that included the uh, sentence that space policy directives would be issued in the future as national security uh, memorandum. Some people think that spelled the death knell of the National Space Council and it would just be folded in National Security Council staff work. I don't think so. I think uh, they've been silent on purpose. I think they're still considering it. Uh, and uh, so it doesn't mean it's a yes or a no, but I just don't think a decision's been made. What can you tell us about the value in keeping the National Space Council? Uh, so I actually think it does have uh, some significant value and especially at this moment in time. Uh, we want to ensure the United States has the most innovative and energetic commercial space sector on the planet. It's an enormous advantage to the U.S. economy. Uh, it's an enormous advantage to our national security. Uh, and some would argue also an enormous advantage to the world if we're the leader. Uh, and the National Space Council can have a, a real hand in that. And economically, uh, the value of space from an economic standpoint, even the most conservative estimate places it is something over a trillion dollars a year by 2040. So that's a huge thing that we need to be part of if we want to be successful. Uh, it used to be not so long ago that government was the only thing in space, really, right? There were some commercial pieces, but now uh, space is everywhere. It's exciting. We're seeing it on television every day. SpaceX launches something. We just landed a Mars uh, rover. It's, it's an exciting time to be part of it. It's captured the American imagination. 
And I think we should try to harness that and make sure that we're making the most of it. Uh, and one particular piece there is uh, the idea of getting our future technology leaders, right? We want to grow scientists, technology people, engineers, mathematicians, all the STEM disciplines. And uh, space is one way to really inspire a large generation of kids uh, and get them interested. And I think that's uh, to the advantage of the whole country. So I think it has a lot of value if, if harnessed correctly and, and really used for that whole of government, whole of economy approach. Right. So how do you think the council could be tuned to the current administration's priorities and objectives without having to carry, you know, the previous administration's approach? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question. I think that gets to the heart of the matter why we haven't necessarily heard anything yet. Um, so uh, no surprise to anyone, the Trump administration's approach, at least the public facing piece of the uh, National Space Council was a little bit of a roadshow made for TV kind of a presence. They had big sets and that's uh, clearly not President Biden's um, MO, I would say, right? So there's probably some reason to put a little distance there. But what the space community knows is that aside from the maybe roadshow aspect of it, uh, there's some really good yeoman's work going on in the National Space Council on producing some space policy directives that maybe didn't have everything everybody wants, but uh, really good, solid government work. And I think that's the piece that uh, – is useful and we should look at and, and could use uh, going forward. And I'm, I'm pretty convinced that's the part industry is also interested in is how do we make sure that we have uh, kind of this integrated approach to space policy. So on the, can you distance yourself from the previous administration? Of course you can. And I actually think that distance is happening right now by not immediately uh, continuing the National Space Council or making a decision on it. So it shows they're deliberating it. Uh, your second part of your question is a little bit more nuanced. Can you tune it? to uh, your own priorities and agendas. And I think, uh, I emphatically think the answer to that is yes. Uh, space now is basically in part of our lives every day. I mean, your phone has GPS on it. It's literally receiving signals from outer space from satellites that the Air Force runs. That's on some level unbelievable, like you're in a science fiction movie, but it's so embedded we don't even think about it anymore. It's just, oh, where, where my map is gonna take me, right? And that's just one little piece. but. You can use space uh, for climate change. It's a priority of the new administration. Um, satellites can help monitor greenhouse gas emissions, identify problems, help identify and you know, locate. And so we can uh, use that for monitoring or regulation or wherever the future may take us on that. Um, as far as uh, other priorities, the president's uh, priorities clearly state uh, interested in diversity, uh, racial equity, and I think uh, and, and, and related to that, frankly, the economy. And so space has two pieces. Obviously, we talked about the, the value of space on the whole, but also making sure that we use it as a incentive for uh, recruiting kids of all backgrounds uh, for the STEM disciplines. I think it's an opportunity we shouldn't miss. So um, I think we're at this point in time where uh, space has become such a huge potential part of our future that having a, a government body that focuses on it and says this is a special thing we want to protect it's useful um, and i just want to leave you with just one a uh, little personal story my toddler son instead of a stuffed animal has a stuffed rocket ship that he likes to play with and show me and carry around and so uh part of that is of course i'm a bit of a geek uh, but part of it is also because it's now much more ubiquitous and it's part of their growing up they watch space launches with me and i think it's a thing we should harness and uh, uh it'll be to everyone's benefit Awesome. Well, space is fascinating, so I don't blame him. I don't think it's geeky at all, especially anymore. It's all we hear about. So uh, thank you so much for these insights, though. It gives us a lot to think about as we follow you know, this, the decision. So I appreciate you being here today, John. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Amanda. I really appreciate the opportunity.